Howdy everyone, this is Jessica from Stamp Punch Love. Today we're going to be making a magnetic flat box for 3x3 cards in their envelopes. Here is my little prototype for my PPA challenge. I used some celebration paper, um, the little hello, um, don't remember where that's from, I'll have to link it down below, but you can see we have plenty of room inside. I did make some changes because I wasn't exactly happy with how that flap went together, um, and here we go. So we're starting with a piece of cardstock that is 10 and 7 eighths by 5 and a quarter. This is Melon Mambo. And then we're going to score at 3 and a quarter, 4 and a quarter, 7 and a half, 8 and a half, and then nine and three quarters. Um, this is all on the long side, obviously. And then we're going to flip it around and we're going to score at one, followed by four and a quarter. We're gonna move the score out of the way and then we're going to fold and burnish all of our score lines. I like to start with the long one, as I've said before, and just do all of those. And then I'm going to drop my paper and then I'm going to cut away the two top rectangles that we have side by side. So I'm going to cut across and then I'm going to cut down, but I'm going to cut all the way down into that little square um, because that's going to create a flap. I decided I wanted a flap just to make it a little more clean and finished. Um, I've, it, the box just kind of folds together a little better that way and you don't have any crazy gapage. So I'm gonna notch in just a little because I feel like it makes a cleaner box, but this is completely up to you. It's not essential to the box. Now I'm gonna notch in these tabs. And again, this is one of those things that just make a prettier, more finished box. And with the little squares, we're gonna do the exact same thing as far as cutting to that first score line and then notching in. Once you do that on the other side, we are done with our trimming. And you can see we only cut away a couple bits, but we did notch a lot. Now we're going to add our matted pieces, um, our DSP and our matted pieces. There are a lot of measurements here, so I'm going to just put those on the blog. I'm not going to try and read them off to you. They'll also be in the description bar, of course. I'm using snail to adhere my DSP bits to my matted pieces or my cardstock. To make matted pieces and I'm using the Go Wild Designer Series paper stack and the zebra print and then I'm using Pacific Point for all of my cardstock mats. The only tip I have um, other than remembering to round your corners before you put adhesive on for your flat bit which I will specify which one's which um, when I write all the measurements down um, is that if you're using a directional paper then make sure that you cut um you cut accordingly there's only two bits that run the other direction and those are the sides um if you mess up then the world isn't going to end um, but if it matters to you just pay a little extra attention now go ahead and round the corners of your flaps. I don't recommend going through more than two layers of cardstock. It, the punches really do struggle with it, but there wasn't much to that second layer because I notched in. So it could handle it in that case. I'm using mini glue dots um, to adhere my magnet and I'm putting it close to that fold line. Um, this is part of what I learned after making this box a few times um, because I did try and record this video like five times, <laughs> maybe more, and things just kept happening that made me have to stop. Um, put it close to the uh, fold line so you, it folds up more cleanly, unlike that wrinkled one that I showed you in the beginning. I'm taking tear and tape and running that along the free edge, um, and I am going to go ahead and pull the release paper off. That, uh, that way, if I do get some overlap on this next step that I'm showing you here, I don't have to fight with the release paper as much. And um, I am sealing this flap all the way up, unlike the last one, because it just looks so much cleaner to me um, and smoother, and I am a perfectionist. So there's that, nice and covered. 
And part of the reason I put it inside the flap like that isn't just for it being clean. It's because these magnets are really stinking strong. Um, and you have to put some, um, some stuff in between them to get them to release. And so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and on here, I'm putting all of my uh, matte pieces on except for the front flap because um, we're actually going to put the magnet under that to make it look better and to help it release. What I'm showing you here is that I'm putting my tear and tape along all my free tabs that don't have our DSP pieces. And putting them on that flap, is there's a reason because what I'm doing is I'm actually going to fold that onto my um, back flap so that it hides that little that little tab piece, um, it adds some, it, I think it adds some structural integrity to the box. I could be wrong. Um, but not having that flap does actually diminish the integrity of the box. So you definitely want to have that little flap, whether you put it to the inside or whether you put it in between those is completely up to you. But this is how I like to do it. Cause I feel like it's cleaner and it doesn't have anything to catch on the inside for the stuff that you put inside. So we're almost done with the construction, but I'm going to take a, a moment to do my stamping. I'm using um, black stays on ink with the Epic Alphabet um, stamp set. And I'm using the W and I know it's photopolymer, but I'm s and people say don't to do this, but I'm using my stays on cleaner to get the stays on ink off. And then I um, do a double clean. And after I take that off with the, um, paper towel, I just clean it with my stamp and mist because um, that gets the stamping cleaner off. And I haven't noticed any problems with it um, w doing that. I haven't noticed any damage to my photopolymer. So I punched out that W with a one and a half inch circle punch. I'm coloring it with my Melon Mambo um, Stampin' Right marker. And now I'm taking a one and three quarter inch scallop punch and t uh, doing that. So I have my layer pieces. Now I'm going to show you what not to do and then what to do. Do not do what I'm doing now. Do not put your <laughs> dot on um, your magnet and then try and match up your positive and negatives because it will go wrong <laughs> like it just did. So I'm taking off my glue dot and I'm adding my, st my little stamp pieces and my layer piece there just to help me get, um, just to help with some separation issues as you'll see in a second. So I went ahead and let my magnet stick together so my positive and negatives are in the right place. Now add your glue dot. In this way, you know you're getting it in the right place so everything lines up and the positive and negatives are lining up. And you can fight with your magnet for a little while because they're so strong. Like I, I, I don't know if I said this earlier. I just got these from Hobby Lobby. I will not be repurchasing them because I wasn't happy with how thick the magnets are. Yay, I finally got it apart. Um... I will be scouring the internet for thinner magnets, but as far as how strong they are, no complaints. Um, they hold. And I'm putting another piece, I'm sorry, another glue dot here on top, um, partially for adhesion purposes, just so it sticks to our um, matted piece there, partially to add another layer to help it to release. <laughs> and so I added some dimensionals and I'm sticking everything down. And you could totally leave your box at this point. It's you know, completely decorated. It's cute. I thought about adding a thumb hole and then decided against it. And um, so now I'm going to put in my note cards. I made six of the note cards. They're decorated just like the box, half of them in Melon Mambo, half of them in Pacific Point. So obviously they're envelopes and those six cards fit in nicely. And now our flap even releases nicely, but still has a good hold. And I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals. You could get away with one if you wanted. Um, a couple dimensionals on the back of my stamp piece. Put that on my Melon Mambo piece. And then run some snail along the back of that. And stick it in the corner of my box. Obviously, this is a pretty large... Um, decoration for the size of the box. So I decided against putting another big decoration on the flap. I decided to just go with a single candy dot in the corner just to kind of add a little finishing element. Again, completely optional. But if you notice on my prototype, I did a little gathering of flowers and I put my stamping bit on the top 
it's, you know, there's a lot of variety that you can add to this box. I wanted to show you again how much room there is in that. You could you could definitely do some more. Um, and if there's single layer cards, you can do even more for your set. So here's a shot again of my first box and the one we made in the video. I look forward to seeing your versions. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks and giggum, guys.